I'm not sure. Are we live? It says we're, the meeting is now streaming live on Facebook. Oh, fantastic. Okay, so welcome everybody. Um, this is Lainey and I have the really distinct honor of speaking with Allison McQuinn today. She said yes. Um, Allison is one of my personal friends and heroes, um, and I'm going to give her just a moment to introduce herself, but this is a part of the mental health series that I had committed to um, recording and sharing with our community. Allison is not coming at um, the mental health awareness from a psychology perspective, although there's a lot of psychology involved. But um, she's coming at it from a very holistic perspective. And I think that what she has to offer in terms of staying healthy right now in a time of uncertainty is going to be so helpful to our community. So welcome, Allison. Can you just share briefly your uh, background and um, talk a little bit about your approach to health and wellness? With pleasure. Thank you so much, Lainey, for inviting me. It's always such a pleasure to hang out with you. Um, my name is Alice McQuinn. I'm a doctor of Heilkunstmedicine, and that's just a weird German word that means the whole art of healing and curing. We work mainly in the realm of chronic disease with patients. And as Lainey alluded to, it's not just about the physical level of health but also the mental and emotional. We take people like onions and strip the emotional and physical shocks and traumas off in the order in which they've actually accumulated them during the course of their lives. Um, while doing this, we have a very uh, naturopathic approach as well with regards to supplementation, diet, that kind of thing. So today we're gonna kind of focus in on that area as to what you can do to up your immune function, which is really critical, not just at this time, but at all times. So anything that I'm going to say today is something that I would share with patients who have a blog right on arcanum.ca that is about upping your immune function. I'm, those are my speaking notes for today. So we're going to address the immune system, um, but before we talk about the physical foods that you can eat and, and supplements and stuff like that, can you talk a little bit about how the immune system and mental health sort of work um, hand in hand? And that way it'll sort of give the foundation for the importance of addressing this from that perspective. Yeah. We talk about um, certain viruses and viruses are opportunistic. Whereas things um, more like chicken pox or measles are more natural diseases. So for example, we all, 80% of the population carries streptococcus in their bodies. It's there all the time. We call it an opportunistic bacteria. And it's waiting for the opportunity for you to create enough stress in your environment for it to activate symptoms. See, everybody in the material realm really thinks, oh, it's a symptom. Now I have the disease. It's like, no, 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 <laughs> no. You actually have to create the conditions right. And if you study germ theory versus terrain theory, you realize that Pasteur on his death actually said, oh my God, guys, I'm really sorry. I buttered up. Oh, I misled you. And I had a really good marketing team. And so, yeah, this is what's come out as the, as the prevalent idea. Well, Antoine Béchamp, who actually was a colleague um, of Pasteur said, mm -mm, you actually have to create the conditions right. I was speaking about this with somebody even yesterday. I said, you know, a child in a classroom that gets chicken pox, for example, um, isn't necessarily subject to the germ theory. The idea being is that there's going to be 80% or 50% of those kids that never get chicken pox. Well, why is that? And we also know that kids that don't have active symptoms doesn't mean they haven't had the disease. We know people that have been tested for titers for diseases that they as, as children actually had, but never had symptoms. 
So the idea being is that we want to really create the health and, and robust state of mind where we kind of have like the proverbial blood on our doors. It's going to pass you by, right? because you don't have the state of mind that creates a resonance with that particular virus or disease matrix. So how to do that? Well, up your health on the physical level, but also up your health on the mental, emotional level as well. And how do we do this? <laughs> yeah, good question. So I must say it's interesting because when I listen to my patients, and the ones that have been working with us for quite a number of months, I offer them any kind of immunization they would like. Homoprophylaxis is something we've been doing for hundreds of years. If you think about it, the vaccines are actually based on homeopathic law, like cures like. The problem with the vaccines though is you've got 19 chemicals and adjuvants. And while that can, if you have the strength to withstand that, you know, go for it. But I offer patients homoprophylaxis. Those that have been working with us for a while are like, Ali, I got this. I don't even need it. You know, it's not, not a thing for me. I don't feel any resonance. You know, I, I'm outdoors lots. I have really good diet. State of mind, it's not even, but those patients that we start to work with in the early times, you know, especially people that have been in the allopathic matrix, they're like, yeah, bring it on. Give me everything. I just, the idea being is that bring me what you have from the outside of myself, you know, and in health, we work more from an inside out state of being, right? There's no magic bullet for health. Health is lifelong immunity, just like lifelong learning. I love how those two things tie together. So in terms of, I know you wrote an article about this and we'll share that in the links, but could you give some high level sort of kind of immune boosting tips yeah, for maybe supplements and food? Yeah. So up your D, you know, get out in the sun. You know, I don't have any tan lines. <laughs> I have a lot of tan. <laughs> it's just the kind of gal I am. Yeah. And up your uh, vitamin C. So I'm making a, a great big pot of Jamaica tea every morning. Really, really ripe. You know, and I, I, you can sweeten it with a little bit of honey. These are the leaves of the Jamaica or hibiscus um, tree. They're, they're beautiful to, to drink, extremely high in vitamin C. Um, I sweeten mine with a little bit of xylitol, which is sweetener from uh, the bark of the um, birch tree. The reason being is I don't want the high glycemic index in my particular diet. The other thing I do when I land in wherever it is I'm staying, Canada, Mexico, um, Guatemala, wherever it is that I happen to be, I will start to ferment anything that doesn't move. So my husband always jokes, he has to stay out of the kitchen because he chance, chances are he'll be put in a jar if I get a hold of him. So what I do is I take um, cabbage and I cut it up. Sometimes I like carrot, red onion is really juicy in that combination. And I will also do it with a bit of um, um, uh, hot peppers, jalapenos. Um, you don't taste the hot peppers. They're not hot after you ferment them. So just, you know, even uh, my kids love that. And then you just add a brine of uh, kosher salt or sea salt, Himalayan salt I use sometimes, depends on what you have, and water. It's about two tablespoons of kosher salt per liter of water. I apologize, I was raised not in the imperial system. Um, so you may have to do a, a Google search on that. What you want to do really is create a very high um, level of probiotics. In the body, we know there's death forces and um, enlivening forces. You want to load heavy on the enlivening forces in your body at all times, especially when something like a, a scourge or you know, a disease matrix is in our midst. 
let me interrupt real fast. There's uh, somebody's watching and they're asking about zinc. Do you yes, know? Any that's the other thing I was going to mention. Yeah. And again, zinc is something that the physical body no longer produces on its own. Same with vitamin D. So these are things you want to make sure that you're supplementing regularly with. If you can't get natural vitamin D, then you will actually want to supplement with it, you know, about three to 4,000 I use for an adult, 1,000 I use for a babe. Um, so the other idea is zinc is very highly, I mean, the first defense to anything that's coming in in your mitt is actually at the level of your tonsil. Zinc is very helpful. Some people uh, will also supplement uh, with nascent iodine. And again, if you have access to these things and can order them from uh, Amazon, wonderful. Um, nascent iodine is very helpful because we're exposed to so much uh, radiation from computers and phones and, and such. So that would be, you know, three to four drops of nascent iodine. Uh, zinc, just follow the, the uh, um, recommendations on the bottle, but yes. The other thing that we do recommend is uh, vitamin E to restore any tissue damage in the body as well. Very, very, uh, also very helpful. Cod liver oil, high, high, high in vitamin A. Um, wonderful for um, really increasing the immune function. We recommend this very highly in the fall uh, when people are starting to kind of go within or inside. Uh, if you are in a quarantine situation, up your cod liver oil and your supplementation, feed your microbiome because you may not be outside as much as you would like. On that note, do make sure that you get outside as much as you possibly can. I was on a hike with five people yesterday and we practiced social distancing. We were all approximately six feet away from each other, but we had an amazing hike up into the mountains. I can't even tell you what that did, you know, for my state of mind. So, you know, I'm really practice. Uh, there's great YouTube videos on for, I follow uh, yoga with Adrian for the last seven years. I have a yoga mat wherever I live and, you know, I just pull it out and, and do my yoga practice. Pace is amazing. Um, weight bearing exercises of all kinds, right for your typology. So I'll just, I'll quickly go over that. With regards to your blood type, this is really important because certain foods act like poisons in your blood. If you're an A blood type, you actually are Asian by blood. You do very well with high vegetable, lower meat content and no red meat. So you do very well with chicken, turkey, a lot of vegetables in your diet. The exercise that's best for you is yoga, qigong, tai chi, these kinds of things, not robust or heavily laden on cardio, very hard on your endocrine system and will blow really your um, adrenals very quickly. So this is really important. You can get more information from us. Uh, we'll actually send out uh, blood type diet uh, for highly optimal foods, um, neutral foods, and then avoid foods. Old blood types do very well with bone broth, red meat, elk, bison, buffalo. I mean, things that are um, not as readily available in, in the North American diet. The idea being is that you really need to fortify the iron levels in your body, for example. Um, they also do very well with high vegetables. Knock the sugar and grains out of your diet, please, please, please. Um, sprouted grains uh, are okay, like Ezekiel bread, for example. Ferment your bread. Sourdough bread is a fermented bread. Knock all other grains, processed wheat out of your diet, refined sugar. Um, if you're going to eat chocolate, make sure it's the good chocolate that is made uh, from cocoa nibs, not the other things that the big, you know, companies would like you to think are chocolate, which are just the husks from the pod. The other thing is B blood types do very well with a European diet. We're European by blood. So what would a European eat in the afternoon? Well, they do very well with a plowman's lunch. So lamb, uh, turkey, um, anything that is actually comes from organ meat, really positive. Bees need to do this, really important for upping their immune function. 
ABs are a combination between the Asian and European diet. They're only 4% of the population. Uh, but again, um, you know, just lots of vegetables, 75% of every human being's diet should be vegetables and the rest low amounts of um, carbs, meat, seeds, uh, nuts are brilliant as well for helping you stay whole and healthy. So what can you say to families that are now quarantined that are <laughs> together um, and they're dealing with uh, immune system issues and anxiety issues, especially with children, and those things are raising. Are there any specific um, practices or supplements or, or sort of foods that you can focus on for these times, especially with children? Yeah, very well uh, said. Anything that I have recommended has already been what we call the sustenative side of your generative power, big honking words. That means you have two sides of your health. One is what you can do on the vitamin therapy, healthy diet, which we've just talked about, exercise. These are what we call the naturopathic approaches to keeping your ground substance really healthy. That's the organism level of your biology. If we have engendered, a mental or emotional or physical disease matrix. It's a bit like a pregnancy. It's very hard to become unpregnant. And no matter how much um, vitamin C you take, you're still going to be pregnant, right? It's, it's a truth. We just know this, uh, you know, instinctually. That's where we kind of come in as Halcon's physicians is to help people that are really struggling on that level. And we're booked about four to six weeks out for this very reason. It's because people are having you know, a real hard time. They're really struggling. A lot of what happens in times of stress is a lot of our childhood issues come up. You know, and for me, I know this. You know, my mother committed suicide when I was eight years old. My father died of a heart attack when I was 17. I was the most frightened person on this earth from my teens, you know, to my thirties. Before I found the system of medicine, you would probably wouldn't recognize me. I had chronic fatigue, uh, fibromyalgia, Jillian uh, Upstein, yeah, bar virus in bed five days a week, every month, horrible menstrual issues covered in uh, psoriasis all over my scalp. So I was one of the sickest people I know. I know what it feels like now to be 57 years of age and the healthiest I've ever been. Like I run the hills yesterday. I did a, God, I think it was 12 miles and I don't even think about it, you know, hiking because I've had to work to buy back my physical and mental, emotional health. Um, that's really what I do is I help people find that for themselves through Heilkun's principles, which are homeopathic. So just just sort of reiterate what you're seeing. You're seeing emotional trauma can be stored in the body and affects the body. And for those of us that are dealing with or have dealt with or will be dealing with our childhood traumas, that's that's a long term sort of um, a path to healing. What about right now? not creating more trauma for ourselves and for our children. Can you, can you give your thoughts on that and how to move through this fear and isolation in a very healthy way? Yeah. It's not an easy question, Lainey, honestly. I mean, if you think about it, I hiked with two people yesterday that were paralyzed with fear. I mean, covering themselves constantly and, um, you know, not just the masks, but also the um, lots of sunscreen, suffering allergies and such. You know, it's a bit like um, if you think about a herd, you know, a herd of, of lions, the lionesses go out at night and what they're looking for in the antelope herd is kind of the weakest link, the link that is most terrified, that's then, you know, fight flight. 
um, the idea being is that if that weakest link, because of the state of mind, because of age, um, because of feeling paralyzed with fear, actually knocks the immune function down considerably, more than you might even realize that people feel prey or have unresolved anger, that's a state of victimization, right? And over time, that causes us to be a weaker link. I know, because I suffered that it, in a way where I really thought that it was just a matter of time before I would be, you know, exiting this earth plane. So the idea being is that, yes, you can build your immune, um, immune function on the physical level. Absolutely. But it's interesting because when we've done live blood analysis with certain people, we have found that the terror of childhood what is still there. When you take away the vitamin therapy, they're actually quite weak. Their iron levels cannot be maintained. Iron being inner light metabolism. If you strike an anvil, it sparks, it creates light. Well, your job as a human being is to metabolize light, right? But if your light has dimmed because of fear or bad regimen over you know, the past five, 10 or 15, 20 years, you're right, it's not a quick fix. Saying, oh, my state of mind is really positive, you know, as, as best I can, meditating, yes. But if I have a shadow side that's unexhumed, I'm going to be a weaker link in my herd. It just is what it is. Um, yeah, I, I wish it were different, but I just, after 25 years of buying back my own health and doing this for hundreds of, or thousands of patients around the world, internationally, it just, it is, it's hard to change your state of mind. Um, from one of the, the We Are World Schoolers who are watching now, there's a comment, um, a question. It's from Sarah. She, she writes, I suspect that these times of quiet and going inward, if we open ourselves up to this, we will see many people revisit childhood trauma. And she, she says, I wonder, though, if they might not recognize it if they're not used to a slower, quieter life. What can be done to help those people? Yes. Well, and that's a great question. We've written blog articles on busyness as your drug of choice. You know, people have used it even in the health field as their drug of choice, you know, because it actually, if we're busy, we have the illusion, and especially uh, the intellect loves busyness. It thinks, oh, as long as I'm productive and ticking things off the list, then I'm doing great, right? But the, uh, and that's a measure again from the outside in. So I love this question. Busyness is a measurement from the outside in of my productivity, right? That I am being a viable human. The thing is, is that in utter stillness, with just breath in my lungs, thoughts in my mind, do I know that my value is even greater in those moments than ticking shit off a list? I mean, seriously. Yeah. And so it's going to scare the living daylights out of a lot of people to suddenly go within. You know, I've meditated for. 45 years since I was a competitive swimmer as a kid, I wouldn't choose to live without that, you know, really in my life, because it's going to come to as a shock to many people who suddenly are at home with their kids, there's going to be a lot of volatility. I mean, it's hilarious. My husband sent me a meme this morning. He said, two weeks after quarantine, um, Ethel is knitting a new um, thing for her husband. It's a noose. <laughs> you know? and so yes, it can get very spicy when all of a sudden you're with your kids 24 um, seven and with yourself 24 seven or with your spouse. The idea being is that get a punching bag. I always say, express your anger in a healthy way, not on your beloved people, you know? I have a, a doctor I've supported for many years as her physician, and she goes home, swears, curses, hits that punching bag for all it's worth, get the anger out. I took a broom mop to an oak tree in the backyard for years just to get the rage and the anger out. 
of being frustrated, of suffering tyranny, you know, that was perceived or imagined. It doesn't matter. You know, I yelled obscenities up into the rafters of my barn for years as part of my therapy. You know, really important. Express it, get it out, but not on your beloved family. The other thing too is, is really gravitate to those who give you energy, up your scenic index, mentally and emotionally. Really um, surround yourself with people. My colleagues are amazing human beings and we boister each other up all the time mentally. Listen to music, music that, you know, um, binaural beats on YouTube are great. If I, you know, if you have a headache or you're feeling depressed or binaural beats are a great way of using resonance to up your state of mind into a more positive way of thinking. Um, positive, you know, affirmations. We put out memes on arcanum.ca on Facebook and Instagram all over the place. We don't even mention this C word because we're all about, you know, creating more positivity in the world. Um, you know, it's, and really dig into what is the true reality for you. Where is this all coming from? What is it they want you to think? And how can you bolster your state of mind uh, really in opposition to that? You know, this makes me think of, I can't think of the name of that pyramid of needs. This guy's name starts with an M. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. but, but he places love and belonging on the same uh, level and to me that's so powerful because it reminds me that the connectedness with one another and if right now during isolation the only way we can remain connected in our, all of our our craziness and our processing and all of that we stay connected through community that to me is the the one saving grace that we can look at do you have any thoughts about other sort of strategies um, that we can do right now today? I think the, the lovely thing too that you just mentioned that you know my husband and I were both doing PhDs. Uh, we ran a farm of 36 animals. We ran a camp on the farm for unschoolers and Waldorf kids and self-educated kids at, at home and it was tough. Like Lainey I gotta tell you there were times Financially, I was just like, oh boy, are we going to be able to put anything into the crock pot this week? Like it was scary at times. And, you know, it was really important for me not to transfer that onto my babes or to, you know, to create a rift uh, with my husband. It, it was really important to me that we cultivate a love relationship, nurturance, intimacy, touch, really, really important. Um, my kids and I had this, this thing that we always did. We'd light uh, beeswax candles and, you know, I'd say 10 minutes, we're in the big bed. And big bed was the, the code for that's where we would all get to cuddle. Everybody got to bring their own books, including me. You know, I would bring something and, and read a passage from it that meant a lot to me or something I had discovered that week or that day. Kids always brought the same books over and over again, you know, and, and that, that is what they loved and what they wanted is that sense of rhythm. And that's really important. Like as physicians formerly of, of three Waldorf schools uh, in Canada, rhythm is really important. Um, that to have kind of a, a daily rhythm that maybe you've not explored before, that approximately 10 o'clock every day we all go out for a walk or to explore explore the creek that's now running that was frozen before to really kind of notice what is nature you know how is she expressing herself right now today you know to make um paper stars uh with kids that cover the windows um you know felted animals felted little uh you know, just to get basic uh, craft supplies, even while you're on the road and traveling uh, to do uh, felting together, sometimes just to get lost in finger knitting uh, together for hours, make a, a rug out of that finger knit wool. You know, these are the things that children really love uh, to engage with. What are you doing? Can I do it too? I mean, that's really the, the questions. And of, 
a course. I mean, cooking, for example, can be an amazing thing. That's a win-win for the whole family, but it's an opportunity really just to be together. Sunday evenings in our house was cooking night. So even the two-year-old had a dull knife and a carrot um, because people want to feel part of a community. Where this is all going, as we know, is there's going to be a huge ascension around 2035. Um, and this is a, a, an ascension, not on a religious level, but of a, a Christ consciousness in all of us. What that means is that peer-to-peer -peer engagement, supporting our, our businesses with each other, trading, bartering, taking it down away from the elite and what they would like us to think is our only means of really um, finance or economics. Uh, uh, uh. This is a grand opportunity that we're all extremely excited about because we're going to come back down to the essence of our grassroots communication and love for humanity and each other. And this is the opportunity really to start to create this web now. And world schoolers are amazing at this. Amazing. I mean, they trade their homes. They trade resources. They trade already on the basis of business. I mean, it's amazing. Amazing. So you are starting a very small ripple in a very large pond that is going to change the whole of really relational um, um, meaning to each other out of love. We just got to get through these next few weeks together, but we got this, guys. Thank yeah. you so much, um, Allison, for your time. And I'm going to have you put all of your links in the link to the article in, in this thread. And I'm going to move also everything over to the mental health thread as well. Okay. I am so grateful. Such my pleasure. And we've done a great score of things on epidemics and, you know, how we treat those. And so, yeah, we've got this, guys. Nothing yeah. to worry about thumbs up on all levels mm -hmm. thank you darling much thank love you to you southern. up in you northern mexico. mexico yeah you in southern babe <laughs> bye, bye. <laughs>